go as far to say that I think 99.9% .9 of all companies around the world are already hacked. They just don't know it. I'm a, I'm a total target all the time, and I get hacked all the time. Okay, even I get hacked, you know, and it's funny, I'll open up an email, it's got an attachment that I think from someone because they've used someone else's account that I know, I'll send the email and I'll get hacked. That's just part and parcel of being me, okay, and I accept, I accept it, that's how it goes. How many people in the room know what a man in the middle attack is? I showed the people in the room um, a presentation that I've been doing for a few years now, uh, where at the end of the presentation I end up stealing someone's house. Uh, it's very powerful. Um, because it all happens very quickly and very simply uh, and then I take it all the way back to how it actually started and kind of everyone kind of always thinks oh my god I didn't realise it was that easy and it's the same reaction in the room that I got today. Now imagine I'm going to Starbucks okay and I sit in Starbucks and I create a Wi-Fi hotspot and I call it Starbucks and I put the same password as what Starbucks use. Are you going to start logging on to my rogue network? Just how okay. careful do we need to be? I'm someone that is cautious what I click on. I tend not to save information too much. I'm yeah. always suspicious of emails that come in. But now I'm starting to think that's, that's not enough. Is it enough? Or? It, look, we don't want to live in a suspicious world constantly because that's going to be a horrible place to live. Yeah? But we just have to be cautious about what we're doing and not open up emails that you don't need to open up. Don't like the guy said about the USB stick. You know, that's an old trick that you know, hackers have been using for a long time. Um, you know, there's, the, you know, you just don't need to do any of that stuff, you know, and just try and not open attachments that you don't know that, who they're from. If you don't know they're from, don't open them. Why would you open it? There's the, you know, there's no need to. And just keep as much information as you can personal. You mentioned when um, your wife and kid came to see you mm. in prison. Was that, was that the one moment for you when it, when it suddenly all, like, the veil came down and you start to realise? It was kind of an accumulation of stuff, to be honest. Um, you know, there was another. There was another part where I realised it was a victim. You know, there was victims involved in the crime that I was committing, and that was when I was in the police station. And um, the police officer that arrested me came down and said I, she hoped I was happy with myself. Um, I kind of said, "Why?" She said, "I've got a young lady upstairs crying her eyes out." And I just was kind of like, "Well, I haven't stolen any ladies. I didn't. What are you talking about?" She said, "No, but you stole her dead dad's." And that kind of was like a massive. You know, the first time that I kind of ever realised that, and I thank that police officer every day because that kind of woke me up to the victim of it. Huh? We've had uh, well over 100 people here from local businesses uh, around Birmingham and the rest of the West Midlands, and we've had some very interesting uh, presentations on, firstly, on what cybercrime is, what uh, internet-related crime is, but then, of course, to finish off uh, with somebody who is a reformed uh, criminal, somebody who's actually uh, done the job, done the cyber hacking and so on, uh, done the fraud, now changed his life around. Uh, is actually talking to business about how they can avoid crime. I think that's been a very interesting evening and a very innovative approach to really quite a, a difficult problem.